Seaweed. You spot it on your sushi, you see it in the shopping aisles, and you observe it by the ocean. Have you ever wondered about how such a seemingly dull marine plant came to find itself on your plate? Not really? Well, what about if I told you that it managed to save a starving Japan from an unsavoury fate? To find out more about the incredible story behind that pun, we have to start somewhere you might not be expecting, the United Kingdom. Kathleen Mary Drew Baker was born to an average family in 1901 in Lee, Lancashire. Being just a bit clever, she won a scholarship to study botany at the University of Manchester, graduating with first class honours in 1922, going on to do research for the university as well as lecture in cryptogamic botany. If we fast forward to 1949, Drew Baker can be found looking curiously at some seaweed, porphyry species, and writing a letter to nature about it, inadvertently changing the lives of countless Japanese in less than 100 lines of writing. You see, in 1948, the Japanese coast was devastated by typhoons, and whilst they'd been farming seaweed for centuries beforehand, albeit with unpredictable and unreliable yields, nobody could now grow for replacement plants, hence the nori industry collapsed. Times were tough for the Japanese, especially in coastal communities. Without nori or foods to replace it, communities were starving. Fortunately, a Japanese scientist noticed Drew Baker's letter in Nature, allowing him to implement techniques based on her research around vastly improving crop yields and reliability. What exactly was this research? Here to explain is Professor Elizabeth Sheffield, a lecturer and researcher just as Drew Baker was, at the University of Manchester. And so what she did was to take bits of shell, I think oyster shells, uh, sterilise them, so probably in an autoclave, um, and then put some seawater with spores of the seaweed in them, and then leave them for a while, and then came back and observed them under the microscope. In fact, in 1928, she was dismissed after marrying federal researcher Henry Wright Baker. This means that, in spite of her circumstances being overwhelmingly against her, she was able to conduct her revolutionary research, and for free, 21 years after being dismissed, and only because she was smart enough to get around the dismissal by becoming an honorary research fellow for Ashburn Hall. Unfortunately, Drew Baker passed away in 1957, not only having never set foot in Japan, but never having even known just how wide-reaching the consequences of her research were. The fact that so many people outside of Japan have no idea of this resilient and brilliant scientist is beyond saddening, especially given how inspirational she is, not just the girls looking down to STEM subjects, but for scientists from all walks of life. Japan has the right idea. Drew Baker has a day, the 14th of April, dedicated to her, as well as a shrine dedicated to her in Yuto in southern Japan. So, next time you're grabbing a bite to eat at your favourite sushi restaurant or strolling along the beach, remember the story of Kathleen Mary Drew Baker, the mother of the sea.